Guys, I was silenced. Just like the goddamn lamb. You what? The silent of the lamb. <laughs> <laughs> to give a bit more context if you missed it, I made a bit of an oopsie in my last video and it got age restricted. No minors allowed. Big no-no. And you might be thinking, Casey, what the hell did you put in that video? But listen, I do have a scapegoat because it wasn't my fault. It was one of you who betrayed me. Is it me, Jesus? No, I thought it was and so did everybody else, but apparently not. And unfortunately, YouTube didn't give me any like clear indication on what exactly was the reason. They like to kind of make it a bit of a game. They give you like one clue that you have to work off of. And I've now concluded that it must have been the shovel tier, which is kind of poetic because in talking about shoveling, I ended up getting shoveled by this guy. But if anything, it made me realize that Susan was a lot more for the girls than I thought, okay? I know a lot of people talk shit about her, myself included, but I think she got the vision a little bit better than this guy. Like, we have beef now. And what makes it worse is I didn't even win the beef I was in. Like, I got whacked. Because of that, we had to do a little bit of construction on the tier. But I will describe the rest of the tiers that we used last time for the people who couldn't watch the video. For anyone who watched the first one, I promise I'll be super quick. Before we get into that though, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Raycon. I've been using Raycons for over three years at this point and I love them. You're paying half the price for the same, if not better quality earbuds. They've got over 50,000 five-star reviews, but also have an easy and free return guarantee. That way you can actually try them for yourself. Specifically, I really love the custom gel tips because apparently I have very uniquely shaped ear canals. So it's nice to actually have a few options instead of just shoving a default one into my ear and hoping it doesn't give me a headache. They're also water and sweat resistant and the everyday earbuds have eight hours of playtime. I find it really comes in clutch, especially because I usually use them for listening to audiobooks or when I'm tooling around out just listening to music. They also offer buy now, pay later options. So you can pay as low as $18 at checkout, as well as an option to get two years of product protection insurance for just a few bucks. So if you want to check them out for yourself, you can click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Anzo to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash Anzo to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring. Definitely check them out if you're interested, but let's get back to the tears. That Fruit Looks Familiar is based on the Twitter back and forth between Charlie XCX and Marina. Long story short, Marina had dropped an album called Fruit about a year before Charlie had released a brand collaboration with a UK company called Impulse. And to Marina, that design looked fruitily familiar. And listen, she's not wrong. When you put them beside each other, they are very similar. But in what world would Charlie XCX wake up one day and go, guys, I'm in the mood to plagiarize. And not only am I going to do that, I'm going to do it for a seven dollar body spray like can we be honest for a second this girl probably just showed up for a check but like last time this year is definitely going to be for more subtle beef plus anything that i feel like has a bit of an art and finesse to it because listen while i don't fully agree with marina on this that fruit looks familiar is hilarious and the remastered edition when another artist came out and claimed that charlie was copying her cover art is even better everybody wants her familiar fruit moment and she's right they do. Next, we've got the Fifth Harmony ass dynamic. Definitely speaks for itself. It definitely retains the like passive aggressive fruit energy from that tier, but it's also very openly shady. Anything that could be a good candidate for those shady Fifth Harmony moment videos will be a great fit here. Next, we have AYDIAMBD, short of course for, and you did it at my birthday dinner. Once again, this is for the beef that needs to be taken offline. Turn off the phone, get off TikTok live, deal with this without an audience. As we all know, we had to say goodbye to Shovel Girl, but she's gonna be replaced with canolaoil.mp4. Cam and Colin, run in here and come get y'all juice. <laughs> Same premise though, this is gonna be for the feuds where there was a very clear winner and a very, very clear loser. Someone was slathering those tiles with canola oil and the other was getting their shit rocked by an oven. The final tier is for the best beefs, the creme de la creme. They've got the drama, the chaos, maybe even reconciliation, but it's all balanced pretty well despite everything going on. It is so good in fact that Jamie Lee Curtis has entered the red carpet, hand on her side, and popped that hip. Okay, Jamie. Jamie, Jamie. All right, first we have Mariah Carey and Eminem. The lesbian Eminem, the lesbian. No, not them. Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Yes, that one. Now this all started because Eminem dropped a song called Superman where he insinuated that he had been dating Mariah Carey. What you trying, B? My new wife? What you Mariah? Fly through 
bedrooms well. Reading these without music is making me realize just how important that shit is because I could very easily make him sound like Rumpelstiltskin right now. What the f you take me for? A joke? You smoking crack? Before I do that, I'd beg Mariah to take me back. Mariah denied ever being in a relationship with that band. And she ended up putting out a song called Clown, where she shades him with the lyrics, you should have never intimated we were lovers, when you know very well we never even touched each other. Eminem decided then that this fun, little silly moment means that he needs to go like mask off and play a bunch of recordings allegedly of Mariah at one of his shows. <laughs> Yo, that Mariah's reps deny this, by the way. It's not her. It's AI. Then Eminem went on to release a song called Bagpipes from Baghdad, where he just openly drags Mariah and her then husband at the time, Nick Cannon. And it's so bizarrely charged with rage. Like, dude, relax. He kind of reminds me of those like little white bald chihuahuas that get like super angry and you just kind of like watch them viciously vibrate in a corner. And while Eminem was vibrating, about a month later, Mariah Carey released the iconic Obsessed. I don't think it's an unpopular opinion to think that this is a way better drag. It has more finesse, silliness, and it's catchy. Like if I was dragged in public to a melody that good, I'm shutting up forever. But like a month later, M.M. ended up responding again with another song called The Warning. This man literally never stops. There's a song from 2019 with a feature from him where he mentions her again too. Like, I don't think I've ever seen somebody live rent-free for so long in someone's head in my life. Now, technically, Eminem should belong in And You Did It At My Birthday Dinner, but Mariah's dragging is so effective I want to put it in canola oil. Now, Lindsay Lohan and Hillary Duff's beef started over Aaron Carter. He had been dating Hillary for like two years and then ended up leaving her for Lindsay. And Lindsay was messy. Hillary! Hillary Duff! No, not Hillary Duff! Sorry, you just pushed kind of the wrong button. She was apparently going around to Hillary's co-stars to talk shit about her, even trying to explain the whole feud to Tina Fey and Amy Poehler on the set of Mean Girls. And when she went out on SNL, she ended up bringing out a girl who was comically dressed like Hillary. Our whole feud is so yesterday. <laughs> But Hillary was very strategic with her responses. I'm not here to talk bad about her like she talks bad about me all the time. But her real response was showing up to the Freaky Friday premiere. She may not have been invited, but she made sure she had an outfit on. Everything about this is so good. Like this is the face of a girl who just wants to start shit. Of course, Lindsay responded by showing up to the Cheaper by the Dozen premiere, and she did that shit in a pastel pink blazer. Like, this is so funny. They both look so mischievous. That's easily one of the highlights from the feud for sure, but there was another moment at the 2004 Jingle Ball. Hillary Duff was with Joel Madden at the time, who was a member of the band Good Charlotte, who were performing. Lindsay's eight-year-old brother Cody was a fan of Good Charlotte and at the show, so he went up to them to get an autograph. But when Hillary told Joel who he was, Joel decided instead of giving this kid an autograph, he would ask him to take him to Lindsay's mother so he could complain that she needed to apologize to Hillary. The kid, of course, starts crying because what the hell, he's eight. But before leaving, he decided to go up to Joel and ask if Simple Plan were there because they were probably nicer. To me, this is easily okay tier. I might be a bit biased, but those carpet pictures alone. Miley and Mandy versus Demi and Selena. This was very serious business on the fifth grade playground, okay? So this all started in 2008, where Miley and one of her friends, Mandy, had a YouTube show that was called The Miley and Mandy Show. And in one of their videos, they decided that they were gonna clown on new Disney stars, Demi and Selena. Yo. Yo, yo. Yeah, I said it twice, got a problem with that. Yo! Yo, yo! Yeah, I said it twice, you got a problem with that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you don't know why? Why? So you got a gap back. <laughs> How this got past the mouse is crazy to me. This was very openly shady for Disney stars though. And of course, Miley did have to eventually apologize for it. The video where I found Miley's apology though is so funny though because of the photo they use. I got the impression that there was like bad blood between you and Me and Demi and Selena. Like why did you choose that photo and why did she just appear like that? I think this belongs in that food looks familiar though. Like I feel like it has the same short jab-ish energy. On the topic of Disney stars, I think we can talk about Selena versus Demi. Now this one's kind of hard to track because they've both been very subtle about it. The shadiest thing that came out of the Demi versus Selena feud slash not feud was a Finsta account, which is like a private Instagram account. It was called Trauma Queen Forever that was allegedly Demi's. It ended up leaking a few years ago and there were a shocking amount of anti-Selena Gomez posts in it. The reason that people thought that this was Demi's account 
account was because they had previously posted the profile picture used on that Finsta account on their main account's Instagram story. But the problem is there were so many people taking re-screenshots of previous screenshots that at this point it's honestly impossible to really tell if they are genuine or if it's just Photoshop. And this whole situation blew up. What made it even worse though was that this situation inspired people to dig into Demi's fiance at the time and they ended up finding a bunch of posts from their fiance asking Selena Gomez to marry him, which is so fucking awkward. Of course, as we know now, they did break off their engagement with Max calling the paparazzi to take photos of him crying on a beach. In a way, he's kind of like Kendall Roy. I feel a bit weird putting it in this tier because it's technically quite offline already, but let's take it even more offline. Let's just keep going. Someone did request Demi's one-sided beef with Taylor Swift. And this is definitely a quick one, and it's kind of adjacent to the beef between Selena and Demi, mainly because it started around the time that Selena was hanging out with Taylor more and talking to the press about how great of a friend she was. And at that time, Demi had been asked how Selena was, and they decided to respond with, I kind of like to look at this as their I don't know her moment, it's kind of got the same quick sass to it, but it's still subtle enough that the mouse won't get mad. Very well played. I would definitely say fruit looks familiar. Next, we've got Lady Gaga and Madonna. 100 people in the room and 99 people say they liked it. 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe in you. Now this all started after Gaga put up Born This Way. At the time, it was getting compared to Madonna's Express Yourself. My question is why do we have to pit two queens against each other? They're both fun songs. But Madonna did not agree. She got very shady. She told ABC News that she found the song reductive and thought, this is a wonderful way to redo my song. I mean, I recognize the chord changes. I thought it was interesting. Gaga came back at that and said that the comparison was moronic, which listen, I kind of agree. I don't see the songs as that similar. Like Madonna, come on, put your fucking paws up. Gaga later elaborated to NME. If you put the songs next to each other side by side, the only similarities are the chord progression. It's the same one that's been in disco music for the last 50 years. Just because I'm the first effing artist in 25 years to think of putting it on top 40 radio doesn't mean I'm a plagiarist, it just means that I'm effing smart. Sorry. Later on, Madonna ended up performing a mashup of both songs on tour. And in 2016, when Gaga was asked about it again, she said, Madonna and I are very different. She's a, uh, you know, a nice lady. And she's had a fantastic huge career. She's the biggest pop star of all time. I play a lot of instruments. I write all my own music. I spend hours and hours a day in the studio. I'm a producer, I'm a writer. What I do is different. And later in her Netflix documentary, Gaga 5 Foot 2, she was quoted as saying, telling me you think I'm a piece of shit through media is like, it's like a guy passing me a note through his friend. My buddy thinks you're hot. Where's your buddy throwing me up against a wall and kissing me? I just want Madonna to effing push me up against a wall and kiss me and tell me I'm a piece of shit. And we also got this. If I had kept that gap, then I would have even more problems with Madonna. I'm kind of torn between the OK and Fifth Harmony tier because it is really good beef, but they beef so much like Fifth Harmony. You know what? I'm going to put them there. All right, next is Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun. Now listen, sometimes Taylor can be a bit corny. Now, could you re-record? Oh, yeah. Might you do that? Oh, yeah. I've been having but she has a way of organizing people to a degree I have never seen in my life. When she's planning out her attacks, every Swifty worldwide is sad. And I think the war between Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun has to be one of the best examples of it. It all started back in June of 2019 when Scooter decided to buy Big Machine Records, which included the rights to the first six albums Taylor had put out. She was super vocal about how much she didn't like this deal, mainly because she had actually wanted to buy the masters herself. Scooter Braun, of all people buying them especially, was a soft spot because he had actually been managing Kanye West at the time of Taylor's beef with him, and Scooter had joined in in some of the online shade against her in the past. Swifties, of course, were very pissed, especially because not not only was this a concern with Scooter, but also that Scott Borchette, somebody that Taylor worked with for so long, had essentially betrayed her. Once Scooter had control of her masters, he allegedly wouldn't let her perform old songs for her AMA's legacy performance or use them in her Netflix documentary, and allegedly they only changed their mind when Taylor publicly complained about it. I think it's impossible to not be inspired by how dedicated she was to being a giant thorn in Scooter Braun's ass. That man lasted 17 months with those masters before he went, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm just gonna sell them. Them. Unfortunately, not to Taylor herself, hence why she started doing the re-recordings. But I think the whole re-recording thing has worked out pretty well for her. Once again, I'm torn between two tiers. This time it's OK and canola oil, because there's no denying that Scooter Braun got smacked by the oven. But this is a very legendary beef that has led to other legendary events. So I think it should go in OK. Grimes, Azalea Banks, and Elon Musk. This whole shitstorm started because Azalea Banks and Grimes 
just wanted to collaborate on a song. Azalea showed up to Elon Musk's house in LA so that they could work together, and this happened to be around the time that Elon Musk was in hot water because of a tweet that he had put out, and considering taking Tesla private at 420. Funding secured. He got in a lot of shit about this tweet, like I'm talking SEC investigation. And Azalea Banks actually told Business Insider about his reaction to everything going on at the time when she was there. I saw him in the kitchen tucking his tail in between his legs, scrounging for investors to cover his ass after that tweet. She also said, which keep in mind, she's talking to Business Insider here. He was stressed and red in the face. He's not cute at all in person. She then decided to go over to Instagram and tell them, staying at Elon Musk's house has been like a real life episode of Get Out. Waited around all weekend while Grimes coddled her boyfriend for being too stupid to know not to go on Twitter while on acid. And at this point, Musk insisted that he had never met Azalea Banks before. He would later clarify though, that he did see her, but it was like from a really far off distance and they didn't really talk. Azalea, on the other hand, continued to post on Instagram saying that she thought that Elon was tapping her phone and then proceeded to share screenshots of a conversation conversation allegedly between her and Grimes where she says that Elon puts on a fake made up accent and has a giant then also mentions that the Russians want Elon for some reason and they're concerned about his kidnapping. Azalea continued to post on Instagram though, saying that Elon had taken her phone, had paid off her lawyer to get information about her, and then posted more screenshots of conversations between her and Grimes. He just got into weed because of me and he's super entertained by 420. So when he decided to take the stock private, he calculated it was 419. So he rounded it up to 420 for a laugh and the SEC is now investigating him for fraud. Like what? <laughs> Keep in mind, this man was 48 when this happened. The final installment we got to this absolute clusterfuck of chaos though was a open letter from Azalea Banks to Elon Musk. Hi Elon. I feel terrible about everything. It's important you know that I came to your home without a single intention other than finishing a series of tracks with Grimes, who I'd been in correspondence with since sometime around June and July. Over the time spent liaising said collaborations, I was welcome to a lot of personal information about you. The stuff made me feel awkward and uncomfortable about being privy to, yet I never had any intentions of ever using the information against you. What started off as a catfight led to some seriously unexpected consequences, and I sincerely apologize. In addition to my aforementioned extras, I've been told you're a fan of my music. If you were up for it, I'd like to meet you in person to properly and formally introduce myself to you. After all, we are now the co-stars of pop culture's latest fan fiction. It's a beautiful ending for it, what can I say? I also love the winky face. Easily okay tier though, like come on. The money that I would pay to be a fly on the wall in that house when that was all going down? More than Twitter blue, I'll tell you that much. Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem are an interesting one because technically this was Machine Gun Kelly before his rebrand. He's a bit of a chameleon when it comes to music. And by that, I just mean that he's very good at turning out the worst possible rendition of whatever genre of music happens to be trending at that time. A few years ago, rap was like the big genre. He's a rapper. Now pop punk is having this moment again, so he's Love with an emo girl. I'm looking forward to his Phoebe Bridgers era. I think that'll be very funny. But back when he was a rapper, Machine Gun Kelly decided to tweet about Eminem's daughter, who was 16 at the time. I have to say, she is hot as f in the most respectful way possible, because Em is a king. Ah, yes, because Eminem is a king. Not because maybe the girl is 16. Years after those tweets, Eminem ended up shading him in a song called Not Alike. I'm talking to you, but you already know who the you are Kelly, but keep commenting on my daughter Haley. And then in 2015, Eminem banned him from going on his radio station, Shade 45. So in response to this, Machine Gun Kelly put out his own terrible diss track called Rap God. Sorry, I got mixed up. It's Rap Devil. Hey, somebody grab him some clippers. His fucking beard is weird. He just has the energy of those people who like earnestly comment on those YouTube playlist videos that are titled like in my villain era. Now I, along with a lot of people, thought that this all started because of those comments about Eminem's daughter. It kind of is because of that, also kind of isn't because Eminem later said that it was also because of the Shade 45 thing. The reason that I dissed him is because he got on first. I'm the greatest rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45 or whatever he said, right? Like I'm trying to hinder his career. I don't give a f about your career. You think I actually f think about you? So yes. Okay, we're gonna put it here, just because I found them both kind of creepy and annoying. Ariana Grande versus the United States of America. Donut Kid has to be one of my favorite mass meltdowns over something a celebrity did, because Americans were really shitting, crying, throwing up over a girl licking a donut. Sorry, she didn't just lick the donut, she also said, what the f*** is that? I hate Americans. I hate America. And people acted like she killed their cat. Do I know what exactly possessed Ariana Grande in that moment to lick that donut? 
No, it definitely felt like a cringy dare you would give someone in like the ninth grade, but I'll allow it because the fall was hilarious. Something I actually didn't know until I was re-looking into the situation, which makes this even funnier, is that apparently this whole situation got her axed from performing at the White House. And in the initial proposal on whether or not they were gonna invite her or not, they spelled her name wrong. Hello everyone, Finance would like to use Ariana Grande as a performer for the gala. No criminal charges for Grande after donut licking video. It brought on two long YouTube apologies, but Ariana Grande's donut licking video won't lead to criminal charges. They were trying to lock her up over a donut. Definitely, and you did it at my birthday dinner. This was blown so far out of proportion for no good reason. Noah Schnapp versus Doja Cat was another one a lot of people suggested. This was another one that was just blown so far out of proportion. Like, why are you going on TikTok Live to beef with a child? To give a brief backstory, this all started because Doja Cat had reached out to Noah over his new co-star, Joseph Quinn who had started in the latest season of Stranger Things, and Noah decided to make a jokey TikTok about it, to which Doja responded by going live and insinuating that the move was borderline snake shit. Like, that's like, that's like weasel shit. I would say Annie did it at my birthday dinner again, though. Like, this did not need to be taken to the extent that it was. Avril is a Canadian icon, okay? But unfortunately, back in the day, she's also a not like other girls icon, hence the Britney and Avril situation. This beef is like passive aggressive central. This is you talking about Britney. Would you walk around the street in an F bra? She's not being herself up there because she's dancing like a hoe. Avril at the time had been branded as the anti-Britney Spears and was quoted making tons of comments about the way Britney dressed, her being an attention seeker, how promiscuous she was, etc, etc. But Britney's response to all of it was honestly so good just because it was one quick jab. Avril doesn't really dance, but whatever. It's weird. My third album sold as much as her first one, which is very funny to me because everyone thought it didn't do that great. A few years after that comment though, Avril actually changed her tune about Britney. In 2008, when she was speaking with Maxim, she said, no one else has it as hard as Britney. I feel bad for her. How does she even think with all those flash bulbs? When I'm being followed, everything's thrown off. Remember in high school when people would start fake rumors about you? Well, this isn't high school. It's like the entire world. I would say this goes in okay, but like beef wise in general, I feel like this was just a case of Avril Lavigne going through her log phase at a time when she was just extremely young and famous. Jake Paul and Zayn Malik is such a random beef pairing, but they had crossed paths because they were both going to a boxing event and were staying on the same floor in the same hotel. And as they were both going to their rooms, Jake Paul had invited Zayn Malik to hang out. Zayn said no, and then Jake took to Twitter about it. Almost had to clap up Zayn from One Direction because he's a little guy and has an attitude and basically told me to f off for no reason when I was being nice to him. Stop being angry because you came home alone to your big ass hotel room. Ha ha ha. Bro, he literally started yelling and freaking the f out. You want to test me, mate? LOL, I feel bad for childhood stars. First of all, Jake Paul, you are not a true Zaninator because if you were, you would know that man does not touch that app unless he's being paid for it. Or something happened in boxing. I don't understand half the shit he tweets about these days. So Zane very well could have not seen those tweets, but Gigi did. LOL, cause he doesn't care to hang out with you and your embarrassing crew of YouTube groupies. Home alone with his best friends like respectful king cause he has me, sweetie. Unbothered by your irrelevant ugly ass. Go to bed. If Gigi Hadid, of all people, called me an ugly, irrelevant ass, I'll see you guys in the next life. It was nice knowing you. Jake, of course, folded as expected. Someone needs to take my phone away when I'm drunk because I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, we know. Canola oil. I think we have our final tier though. As always, if you guys would have ranked anyone differently, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also catch me on Twitch. We're in the middle of streaming Detroit Become Human. The rest of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Spotify, all that crap will be down in the pinned comment down below. But otherwise, really hope you guys enjoyed again and I'll see you in the next one.